Chris Hensley is a registered representative of Cambridge Investment Research, Inc., a broker-dealer member of FINRA, SIPC, investment advisor representative of Cambridge Investment Research Advisors, Inc., a registered investment advisor. Cambridge and Houston First Financial Group are not affiliated. Good morning, everybody. You're listening to Money Matters on KPFT Houston. I'm Chris Hensley. The time is now 11 a.m. Uh, is what I usually say on a Friday, uh, but that is not the case today. I am actually operating remotely from a spare room in my office, uh, as is everybody else right now. Um, you are probably a little bit restless, uh, a little bit anxious right now. Uh, you're wanting to go out and go for a walk. You're wanting to get to a gym. Uh, you're wanting to hug a distant family member. Um, you've got the kids home like I do, and you're having to play teacher. Uh, and so you're used to us talking about finance. We're going to put a pause on that right now because uh, we're in a different situation. Everybody's stay at, staying at home right now. And so we wanted uh, to put together a show for you that has to do with the topic of staying active, being mobile and fit, and even stress management. So um, I have with you uh, two of my lifelines when it comes to my own personal health and fitness and even stress management, as well as my family, the two people here in Houston, uh, in the heart of Bel Air that I trust with my personal health, um, with you to talk about this topic. So please stay tuned, keep listening. Uh, I am going to uh, just take a few moments. If you're a longtime listener, uh, you know I always use just the first few moments to tell you a little bit about what's going on in Houston uh, when it comes to financial literacy and then what's going on with the show. So we'll do just do kind of a calendar update here. Uh, with KPFT, we are uh, essentially on pause. There are essential uh, staff members there that are about two people. That's going to be Rourke from Wide Open Spaces uh, and one other person. And so they're playing the archives here. So you will probably hear this on the FM side. Uh, we are a podcast as well. And so you'll have a podcast uh, notes as well. So I'll put all the information on there. Houston Money Week, which you've heard me talk about for the past, uh, all the way since November, we've been building it up. Well, that takes place in April. Uh, and so that's on pause as well. So you'll be hearing some information about that. Upcoming guest, April 10th, we're going to have Robin uh, Dreeke. He is the author of um, a very interesting book about that I just finished reading called Sizing People Up. He is an ex-FBI agent, uh, and he will be on April 10th. So that's uh, going to be a good show. And then Mike, M let me see if I can say this right, Mike M Milakowicz, I'm probably slaughtering the last night, name there. Uh, he's a New York Times bestselling author of the book uh, Profit First, which is an accounting book, uh, Clockwork, and he has a new book coming out called Fix This Next, and so he'll be joining us on April 22nd. So with that, we've got Pablo and Kylie patiently waiting here uh, to, to uh, join us, so I'm going to go ahead and leverage as much time as we possibly have with them. Um, and let me introduce them to you. Uh, I know Kylie, Kylie and Pablo quite well, but I want to uh, introduce them to you. Pablo, uh, or I'm sorry, Kylie is uh, the ex-NFL linebacker for the Houston Texans and the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, he is also the owner of the Athletic Room, and we'll let him uh, introduce himself as well. Kylie, can you tell us something about yourself outside of that bio so that listeners can get to know you a little bit better. Yeah, um, so I, I probably, I'm gonna lead with the thing that I'm most proud of, the thing that, you know, kind of defines me. And that's, uh, you know, I'm married uh, to, to a beautiful wife, Marisa, for 18 years. I have four children and, um, you know, I'm, I'm having a lot of opportunity for a lot of family time during these stay at home, um, you know, order. So it's been, uh, it's been, a, it's actually been, you know, there's so many things that are going, going, you know, terribly, you know, are just so many things that you're very uncertain about. But the one thing is this, this added family time and this, this ability for us to connect. I mean, it's been, it's been quite a, a big blessing for, for me and my family. So um, that has actually been something I've been really, you know, been very focusing my gratitude um, around this opportunity that really is, you know, uh, was un, you know, unexpected, and you know, we're taking full advantage of it. 
I, I love that. Um, you know, looking at this as kind of an idea to hit the reset button on some of those things that we've forgotten about. Uh, but <laughs> I, I'm kind of a workaholic, so uh, sometimes you have to grab me and sit me down to make me do those things, and we don't really have much of a choice on that. So right now, that's a, a good thing. So Pablo, I want to uh, introduce you as well. Uh, Pablo is, uh, most people don't realize that we have a world champion jiu-jitsu professor right here in the heart of Bel Air. Uh, I would like to say Pablo is a hidden secret, <laughs> uh, which he shouldn't be because we are we have one of the best jiu-jitsu schools out there right here in Bel Air. Uh, Pablo uh, started uh, jiu-jitsu at the age of 14 in his small hometown in Brazil. Uh, at the age of 16, Pablo made the difficult decision of leaving his hometown to train jiu-jitsu full-time. Uh, fast forward many, many years, he's right here in the heart of Bel Air. Uh, Pablo, for listeners to get to know you a little bit better, can you share something maybe separate from that bio? So, um, as everybody who knows me very well, know, um, I'm a jiu-jitsu lover. Uh, I dedicated pretty much all my life to jiu-jitsu. Um, I just have a lot of passion for what I do. And I think that's why active, uh, uh, I got to active all my goals. I love that. I love that. So let and me. Can, uh, can I can I can I brag on Pablo for a little bit too for a second? Oh, oh absolutely. What the the thing that is the something that a lot of people don't 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 have an opportunity that don't interact with Pablo is is the way in which he leads his life is you know is very it's it's just it's amazing to watch and you know the way he's created you know destinies for himself all through mindset and all through um um un having these these deep connections to just commitment focus and how he's able to communicate that and 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 kind of share that um in a loving way with the people that he gets to interact with on a daily basis and especially the children um is probably something that you know makes his studio so different and so unique from everywhere else i've ever been i, I love that i would just piggyback on top of that and say yes 100 uh, percent on all of that that's why i'm having you guys on the show because really when it comes to my health personally you guys are one of the are two, two of the biggest influences on my life individually as somebody who is about to turn 46 here in april shout out to the april quarantine birthdays <laughs> uh it is it is hard later in life so let's kind of let's uh, d uh dive right into it how important is it to stay physically active during this stay-at-home order? You can go first, Kylie. Okay. Um, look, I think it is incredibly important, right? And I think, you know, uh, obviously uh, all of us here, I mean, we're, we, we consider ourselves lifetime athletes. Right. So, yes, you know, um, Pablo and myself, we probably did something professionally. Um, but Chris, you are considering yourself a lifetime athlete. And that's why you participate in, you know, you know, rolling or Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in the school and working out outside of it. We know that exercise is so critical to a number of things. Right. We know it's critical to our immune system. We know that it's critical to just our bodies. And, and, and mobility and movement. Um, and at a time where we really have, a, all many of us have a, a, a little bit more time, um, it's so critically important, not only for our bodies and not only for our immune system, but also for our mental health, right? Because, you know, we're inside, we're, we're with our families, we are going through different stressful events, we're all dealing with a lot of stress given you know kind of COVID-19 and what it's doing to our our personal financial life what it's doing to our financial the, uh, the the financial of our business all that type of stuff and then just our our neighbors our friends our family so we know one quick easy cure is by just getting out there and getting exercise getting activity which does a number of things for your body but most importantly it keeps you healthy and so that is why it is absolutely critical probably more critical now than it than at other times to make sure that you stay on you know an exercise program because as you stop moving as stress builds up in your life your immune system becomes compromised 
And we know that there's a way to reset that and make it stronger. And that's through, you know, staying active and, and, and keeping moving. That's that's super important. Pablo, I'll ask you the same question. How important is it to stay physically active during this stay at home order? Yeah, I agree 100 percent with everything, every single word kind of said. Uh, it's very, very important to keep your body moving, you know. Uh, uh, mind and body uh, should work together. You know, you cannot just stay home and be thinking like because you're reading books, you're trying to do other stuff, you, you're doing anything good for yourself. You need to do both. Both need to work together. Um, that's really, really bad time right now. And the, I like to tell the truth. You know, the way uh, uh, even if I hurt people's feeling, I was going to tell the truth. So the way I see the things, people already love to find excuse not exercise. Mm-hmm. And that's now it's a perfect reason or excuse, you know, to people just stay home. And now is the time when people should be pushing themselves to do something, you know. Uh, one thing people don't realize, what killed the most in the entire world, what killed the most people, it's heart disease. It come first to cancer, any other sickness, heart disease. And it has everything to do with the diet. And exercise mm-hmm. and people don't realize that so it's very important uh, uh everybody try to go outside do something you know go for a walk you go for a jog uh do some push-ups home but do something it's much much better to you just stay home and not doing anything i love that i love that you said do both because you mentioned you know people are at home they're reading uh, they're doing things to keep themselves involved, but it may seem to be an excuse for not doing those workouts, those things that yes, we, exactly. we know we, we need to be doing. I know on social media, I'm seeing a lot of people saying, hey, I'm watching TV. I'm taking a break. I've been more busy right now than I have been in the past uh, two to three months. So so making sure that that becomes a priority and doing both is is huge. So let me let me move on here and ask another question. Uh, really just kind of sharing some ideas because, you know, people who are going to be resistant to doing the things that that we need to do physically anyway uh, might have a hard time imagining what activities they need to be doing right now to supplement that. We're not even walking to our cars to go to work right now. We're losing, you know, there's extra calories in there we need to burn. Can can you share with us some ideas of what activities might work at best, uh, best at home, Kylie? Yeah, no, absolutely. There are so many, there are a lot of, I've actually taken this time and really been playing around with a lot of different types of workouts. Um, My general advice for everybody is first and foremost, you need to walk, right? So we, we need to be outside. You need to walk. We understand you have to be safe. You have to have social distancing. You have to keep that. But walking does two things. One, it's walking. So it's great for your body. We're designed to move. We're all athletes because we're all designed for movement. The second thing is we know that three fourths of us in America are deficient in vitamin D and vitamin D is called the sunshine drug. So it does a couple of things for you. One, it actually is, is a very, very good stimulus for you hormonally and you know, something that can improve your, your, your immune system. And then, um, And secondly, you know, you get it from just exercising and walking and walking outdoors and doing that type of stuff. So that is one of the first things that I that I recommend everybody should be doing like there, you know, and it's been really fun going around our neighborhood and just seeing family after family outside walking the streets. I've never seen our streets so full with people walking. Um, Go ahead. I was just going to uh, uh, validate that as well. As soon as you tell people, hey, you can't go outside, I've looking out the window of a house, I've seen more people out walking right now than I, I have ever seen in my life. So I would just say yes on that. You know, and so it's so wonderful to see people doing that. Um, after that, you know, uh, some of the things that Pablo has been has been giving our school, these, these basic exercises, sometimes we – we want to complicate exercise so much. We want to think that, oh, we have to be doing these certain movements or what's it called, but it's all, they all started somewhere and it typically was without weights. So a lot of body weight exercises, what I've been uh, playing around with, uh, push-ups, um, you know, sit-ups, some, you know, the old school stuff. 
And the other thing that I am really, really focusing on is, um, is making sure that you're also stretching. So maybe you are relaxing, maybe you are in front of the TV um, and just kind of binge watching Netflix. What I tell my children is there's no reason you can't do that on the floor, either stretching or using some type of foam roller, right? Take care of your body. It's, you know, it's, it's a tool. It's a tool for you ultimately when this world opens back up for you to go out back out and, and make money. So take care of it. Um, and then the, the, sorry, I keep saying the last thing. And the thing that we've been doing the most with my family, because we've been working out as a family has been, we've been really playing. We've been having fun playing, making exercise fun so everyone can do it. You know, whether that's a game of kickball, whether that's, you know, jumping on a trampoline with my children. Um, these are all things that, you know, that we're kind of doing in the Wong household and dancing. And we're just having a blast with it. So, um, I, you know, I encourage people to do things that they like and, and make it fun. So I will, I will, uh, you said some very important things right there. You started by mentioning walking. That kind of ties in, the cardio involved with walking uh, ties into that heart disease that Pablo was just talking about. That's definitely something everybody needs to do. And we're kind of putting that on pause if we just stay, stay around the house and don't get out and do that. Uh, you talked about vitamin D from the sun, just getting out and warming your body up and, and, and even seeing the sun. If you're homebound the whole day, that's not good. People are already vitamin D deficient. So that that's huge. And then the idea of playing, making it fun. Um, so, Pablo, I'm going to ask the same thing. I, I already know some of the answers on this because of the, the uh, online content that you've been sending out as well. That's been very uh, helpful uh, in my household. What are some of the activities that, that people might do at home? Uh, so many things. Uh, today you have uh, uh, the Internet, you know, you can Google, you can find so many things you can do. Uh, a lot of people know have the knowledge you know people who never work out before they think just the only way they can exercise if they go to the gym you know and lift some weights and it's not correct you know but i understand the most of the time because they just don't have the knowledge you know it's a lot of exercise you can do just by the weight like kyle said you can just sit on the floor stretch watch tv you're doing something great for your body and people don't realize that that's for you to get a good workout, just probably going to take 30 minutes of your day, you know, mm -hmm. and that's it. And it's a very easy exercise you can find on the internet, just by the weight where you're not going to hurt yourself. And you're going to feel great after you're done. Um, another thing uh, Kyle was saying about the walk in the sun, people don't realize how those things is so important for you. Uh, not too long ago, so I hurt my back uh, last year. And one of the things people has been telling me to do is walk. It's one of the best things you can do. And then I start thinking about, like, man, before when I was young in my city, my city is very small. So, you know, use a car to go to the place, to the gym to work out, to the gym to train jiu-jitsu. So you just walk for 30 minutes back and forth. And that's not a problem because you always see a friend, stop, talk a little bit, and walk again. And we don't do those things anymore, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you get in your car, get to work. After work, get in your car again, go to the gym, or go, come back home. You didn't walk. You didn't get any sun during of the day. And that's so bad for your body. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think people should realize that, you know, at least like 20 minutes. So now when I have the chance to walk to the gym, I just walk 20 minutes walk. I get to the gym or go for a jog. And I try to stay outside with my dogs playing because I know how, how beneficial it's the sun for ourself, you know, and people need to start to realize those things. I, I, I love that. And, and I, I'm going to pause and, and uh, brag on Pablo here for a moment because I got a, a, a um, an online video that Pablo, Pablo had done with the jujitsu classes that were taken that I could do with my son. And we have been stir crazy for like two weeks. Uh, and so that was really, really helpful to be able to do that. Um, as an, I think, and Kylie earlier was like, Chris, you, you fall into the athlete category. No, Kylie, <laughs> just thank you for doing that. But at 46, I didn't do any sports until I started jujitsu. So here, the reason I'm mentioning this is because like a lot of lay people, uh, you guys are able to the, when we are past this, 
when we are on the other side of this COVID-19 or corona, uh, coronavirus, uh, the, the ki types of guys that you are and why I look to you as coaches is I've had injuries where Kylie has told me, hey, you need to foam ro roll your knee and, and you knew it. You could see it. You're like, it's not that. It's this. Pablo, um, I, I would ask for help on this. And he's like, Chris, you need to work on your balance. And so and, and you guys could see it. Uh, but as a lay person who's not done a lot of athletic stuff, uh, we lean on that. So I'm just reminding people and we'll talk about this at the end, how they can uh, get access to you guys and where they would go, go to do that. Um, <laughs> Uh, so so th this is really important. You've kind of had to uh, pivot with your businesses because it's such a high physical contact uh, business, but both of you. Um, tell me a little bit, because you you both work with elite top performing athletes. Uh, how important is active recovery uh, in your opinion? Pablo, I'm going to let you go first because I could talk forever <laughs> on this. <laughs> uh... I wish I wish I could have the knowledge that I have today. When I first started Jiu-Jitsu, I don't understand the word recover. It's just go, 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 train, train, train. Uh, it's not health at all. You're trying to train with no knowledge uh, and try to be a professional athlete. It's I tell everybody it's not health at all because you hurt, you don't have a choice. You need to keep training. You know, it's the only way you're going to be a champion. Uh, a lot of the time, the diet, you know, uh, kill yourself and then you go home, you know, get a good night of sleep. And those things start accumulating, you know, over years, over years. When you're young, you're not going to feel anything happen to you. But later, you're going to feel, you know, all the damage you did to yourself. So recovery is something very important. And even if you're not a professional athlete, you know, you want to live for a long time, you need to think about your recovery. It's something very, very, very important in everybody's life. Uh, one thing my mom always say, one night of sleep is the best meal. It's the best thing you can get in your life. You know, if you get home, you sore or you hurt, you can't sleep. So you need to take care of your body has like a, a, a car, you know, right. you know, no, no, put it right. The right gas, the right thing is on the car. going to be an ugly car and the car can break any time. And that's how I see things in this way. I, I love that. You mentioning sleep. A lot of people leave sleep off of that. At my age, if I fall asleep at the, on the couch at 930, that's my body telling me, hey, man, you need to take a rest. I, I'm going to listen to that. Uh, Kylie, same question to you. Uh, and you, you work with many elite athletes as well. Uh, how important is active recovery to you? So it is, it is hands down the most important thing. So I want to kind of take you a little, uh, in my opinion, right? The point of any exercise, any, any type of exercise workout that you ever try to do is to stress your body, right? So exercise is stress. We actually call that you stress. And the purpose is to allow your body to recover so that next time you experience that same exercise, that you're actually come back stronger. Right. And so so recovery is really what you're going after. Even when you're exercising, you're exercising to make sure that you recover. So that way, when you exercise again, you can build on top of it. Right. That's the whole idea of, you know, exercise science. Now, as a professional athlete, you know, in the NFL, the you know, my job and and when you get into, you know, uh, I'd say big money to where it's very organized. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of people on your team to try to optimize performance. My job in the NFL was my number one job was recovery, right? So mind you, I did not say that my job was to tackle people or was to work out or was to do anything. It's all about being a professional is all about the recovery in between because playing games, practicing, those are given. You're going to do that. You have to do that. There's no way around it. But the pros, the guys who really separate themselves, they are the ones who take recovery as, you know, you know, a, a critical component to their performance. And this goes for not just sports. This goes for work life balance. This goes for a trader who's sitting at a computer and dealing with a lot of stress 
you know, um, you know, trying to trade, you know, whatever commodities or, you know, equities or whatever it is, all of these things can, can, you know, you need to recover from. And so, you know, one of my favorite quotes, you know, JJ Watt said at the, you know, a couple of years ago, he's like, look, my life is boring. I go to bed at eight 30. You know what I mean? Like that is what a pro athlete does. It's not sexy. It's not glamorous. He's going to bed because he is trying to perform at his optimal, you know, at, at his best. And in order to do that, you have to sleep. Remember? And that's, that's, that's another form of recovery. Sleeping is the only time that your body actually repairs. And so that is why, you know, we, when we talk about, you know, not getting enough sleep or, you know, young athletes who are, you know, burning the candle at both ends, the reason why breakdowns, the reason why issues will occur is because their body just doesn't have that time to repair. And so, you know, the number one thing is, you know, sleep followed by nutrition and then hydration. And, you know, those three things um, really before you get into stretching and foam rolling and all these other things that you can do to just optimize even more, um, those are your the, the the foundation that you have to build on. I love that. I love that. We've got just a few minutes before the show's over, keeping in mind that we only have about four minutes left. Each one of these questions we could do a whole show on. <laughs> so I wanted I wanted to take a second just to uh, for listeners who are interested in getting in touch with you and using your services, how would they go about doing that, uh, Pablo? Uh, how would somebody find out about your uh, your uh, gym? Um, the best day, the best way today, it's send us email. It's Pablo Silva BJJ Gmail.com. Um, if not, any person can just walk by, you know, come take a look in school, see how everything looks like. Come talk to me. Uh, have a, uh, just put my name on the Facebook, social media, Pablo Silva. Try to reach me out from there, too. It's uh, uh, pretty easy. Has so many options. Perfect. And uh, if you're if you're driving right now and you're listening to this, don't feel like you have to write it down because we do have the links on the podcast notes as well. Kylie, how could somebody get in touch with you if they wanted to work with you for the athletic room or even the region room as well? Yeah, no, um, both of the websites. So the athletic room dot com or, you know, region room dot com. Um, but, you know, you could also just just look at us on Instagram or Facebook. You know, um, start, you could start there, send an email to info at the athletic room .com. Um, check out our website. We're actually be updating it right now. Um, you know, we're going to be doing a lot of stuff because we, we recognize that people are at home. We, we want them. I'm, I'm such a, you know, proponent of stretching and flexibility and taking care of your body and making sure that you're listening to your body. Um, and so we're going to be releasing a lot of content. So send us an email, get on our email list so we can, you know, give you, you know, ideas around lower back pain, um, ideas, stretches for, you know, hip flexors or, you know, um, shoulder movements and that type of stuff. So we're kind of building all that content so we can just start delivering out to everybody, you know, free of charge, um, you know, just because, you know, we want to keep Houston healthy. And, you know, we want to create the healthiest community here in Houston. And so we want to be a part of that. So that's uh, kind of what the athletic room is trying to do right now. Fantastic. We are right here just with a minute and a half left. Uh, Pablo, what have I forgot to ask you that you want to share with listeners today? Uh, let me think. Um, nutrition, it's something very important. Uh, I wish we could have more time to talk about nutrition. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very important you really understand what you put in your body. Everything ha uh, uh, has a different benefit, you know. Uh, eat, eat well, gonna help you with everything. We, are, we were just talking about sleep, you know. Um, normally I get to the, from the gym very late. I was eating every single night very late, a lot of meat. And I just didn't sleep well. Mm -hmm. and I didn't feel my body was recovering. And then after I start research and try to understand more about nutrition, uh, it's been great. You know, I get six, seven hours of sleep. 
So it's, it, I wish you could have more time to talk about that. But uh, like I said, today, everybody has internet. You guys can do the same homework as I did, you know, research about nutrition. You're going to see it's so many benefits. So remember that while you're sitting at home uh, and you're deciding what you're going to eat and we're eating out of stress, remember nutrition is super important. Kylie, I'm sorry we're right here at the end of the show. I want to thank both of you guys for coming on today. Uh, have a great rest of the day. All right, thank you. Thank you.